This video is sponsored by PokedownStore.com, the best place to get yourself some TCGO code cards. They have literally everything from Vivid Voltage already up on stock to specific promo codes like Eternus. Definitely check out the website and use the coupon code ZAPDOSTCG for 5% of your next order. Also, this video is sponsored by CardMarket.com. This is a platform I personally use every day. If you're from Europe, you're obligated to check out this website. It's fantastic. You can sell your own cards or uh, purchase cards from people all across Europe. So definitely check out both of my sponsors. You're going to help me out a ton. So uh, thanks again for uh, tuning in for this video. Enjoy. What's up YouTube, it's Zapdos TCG here and welcome back to another TCG video on my channel. This video will be uh, a video to showcase how to play the Pokemon trading card game uh, from scratch. So if you are an expert player or have been playing for a couple of years, this video will probably be not for you, but this is for new players and actually to get new players into the game because this is one of the most fantastic communities in town. And if you are looking on the internet uh, how to play the Pokemon trading card game, this might be a video for you. Also, if you're an expert player, maybe you are forgetting a couple of these things. We're just gonna have uh, ground layers to play the tra trading card game from scratch. So hopefully you will enjoy the content. And if you're enjoying the content, be sure to destroy that like button as always, because that does help out the channel more than you would possibly think. Okay, maybe you have already played a card game, maybe you've played Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, etc. Uh, this is going to be the playfield. That is uh, right now on the screen, we have uh, the active Pokemon, which is actually the Pokemon that is only able to attack. So this is the Pokemon that is uh, your main Pokemon that can get damaged easily and all that. We have the bench slot. This is actually your backup Pokemon. So these will uh, come on the bench and uh, you can only slap down basic Pokemon if you start a game. We're gonna go over every single aspect. We're gonna go from uh, how many cards in the deck to all the specific tra trainer cards that could be uh, played. And uh, you can always find, of course, the rules on the official Pokemon website as well. I do recommend you install the trading card game online uh, because that is a, a very nice way to get yourself into the game. So. We've already explained, uh, it's sort of like the video game. The active slot is your main attacker and then the bench is your uh, your backup attackers. We have your deck. Your deck can only be exactly 60 cards. No, not 61, not uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, 59. Uh, you can have only 60 cards in your deck and that has to be the exact same number. Then uh, for the uh, amount of cards, you can have four cards uh, with a specific name in your deck. Before, uh, for example, four Blacephalon in your deck and then that's that. No more, no less, four of the exact same Pokemon with that name. The discard pile is where the cards go if somebody something got knocked out or if you play the card, that's where they go. And then we have uh, the stadium zone, which is actually the play zone for both players. So if you slap down a stadium, it actually helps for both players simultaneously. It can actually uh, help them or like uh, work them down. Uh, it all depends on which stadium card. The prize cards on the other side is uh, where we are gonna place them. These are actually six cards from your deck that you don't have access to until you knock out somebody of the opponent. So if you knocked out a Pokemon, you can you have access to one of the prize cards, but more on that in general. So that is the play field. And uh, now we're gonna actually uh, showcase that you have uh, to have at least one basic Pokemon to start a game. So your deck has to include one basic Pokemon. And uh, right now I'm actually going to be giving you an example. So uh, let's just uh, showcase. This is a Pokemon card. So uh, what can we see? There's a couple of different things about Pokemon cards. We have uh, Pokemon, we have trainer cards to assist the Pokemon. And then we also have energy cards and the energy cards are the attack requirements. So as you can see, this Rowlet has two attacks. The first attack, Hide and Seek. Uh, you can use that for a grass energy. So you definitely need to have a couple of energies in your deck to start attacking with so this rally needs just one grass energy to get itself started uh, to start attacking so as soon as it has a grass energy it can go and use that first attack and you can attack once during your turn if you attack your turn ends so first of all we're gonna be looking over all these specific uh, different cards so we have energy cards uh, trainer cards and Pokemon cards so in this uh, example Rowlet here uh, it is a Pokemon you can see on the left top corner that it is a basic Pokemon Pokemon can be basic Pokemon, they can be stage 1 Pokemon, which is an evolution. Uh, I'm actually going to showcase that on the screen as well. So here we go. So as you can see, this is the evolution for the Rowlet, that is Dartrix. And uh, if you want to slap down an evolution Pokemon, 
your basic Pokemon has to be in play for at least one turn, but more on that later. So let's just check out Rowlet again. It is a grass type, which indicates that you can see that on the right top corner that it has the grass symbol. There's different types in the TCG. We have grass, fire, water, lightning, uh, fighting, psy psychic, I already said that, like metal, darkness, a whole heap of uh, different types in the TCG and every single type has its weakness and resistance. In this case, Rowlet does not have a resistance, but uh, it does have a weakness. On the left uh, yeah, corner, uh, you can see that it is weak to fire. And because it is weak to fire, it actually gets double the damage. So that means if, uh, let's say, a Charmander, a fire type, slaps damage onto Rowlet, it is actually multiplied by two because it is weak to fire. We can also see that uh, this little Rowlet has uh, 50 HP, which means if somebody slaps 50 damage or more, or actually if Rowlet receives 50 damage or more, it is knocked out and it goes to the discard pal, which we showcased in the playfield area. And uh, yeah, then the opponent takes a prize card. There's six prize cards in total, and uh, the player that gets all of their prize cards first is the winner of the game. There's of course alternate win conditions. If you don't have any bench Pokemon and your active Pokemon is knocked out, then you also lose the game, or you also can lose if you cannot draw a card on the start of your turn. And we're gonna talk about how a turn of Pokemon TCG looks like very shortly but right now we're just wrapping up the Pokemon side of things you can also see on the right uh, corner on the bottom there is that it has a retreat cost of one and it, it, that indicates that like it's not like in the video games where you can just switch out for free that's not the case in the trading card game you have to pay an energy cost so in our example if we get rid of the grass energy and uh, put it in the discard pal we can actually uh, switch our Rowlet to uh, one of our bench Pokemon, but uh, then you lose your energy. So there you can only attach one basic energy per turn. So it's a little bit hefty to uh, pay that retreat cost, but luckily we do have trainer cards that can assist with retreating. Then uh, lastly, it's attacks. As mentioned, you can have uh, multiple attacks on a Pokemon card and they're always having an energy requirement. It's first attack in this case for Rowlet is a grass energy. If we have a grass energy, then uh, we can, let's say it is back, the grass energy. We have the grass energy, we can use hide and seek, we can flip a coin and we can have an effect going around. In this case, that uh, the opponent cannot slap damage onto uh, Rowlet during the uh, <laughs> next turn, which is uh, very hefty for sure. And uh, its second attack is for two colorless energies. As soon as you see a colorless symbol, that means that uh, it can uh, be provided with every single energy in the game. So uh, let's say you have two grass energies on there, you can use tackle for 30 damage. Uh, if you have a grass and a fire energy, you can still use the attack tackle for 30 damage. So the carless requirement is like uh, an energy of your choice. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, you could, of course, as mentioned, can evolve Pokemon, uh, but they have to be in turn and play for one specific turn. So if you have a Rowlet and then attack or pass your turn, the following turn you can evolve all the way up to Dartrix. And Dartrix, as you can see, has better attacks, has more HP, so if you evolve, you get uh, a bonus uh, in the TCG. And it does take a while, but you have more HP and all the good stuff. Uh, you can also evolve into a stage 2, but that takes a little bit of time. So uh, now the Dartrix has to be in play for at least one turn. But after the, uh, you're done with that, you can uh, the following turn evolve into the Sejuai and boom! Now we see something else on a Pokemon card and that is called an ability. We have active abilities and uh, state of uh, abilities, these abilities that activate from themselves. In this case, it is always alive, this ability. This is a Deep Forest Cameo. That means this Decidueye cannot be hit by V Pokemon or GX Pokemon. We're gonna explain what those are very shortly, but uh, Decidueye here has that ability and it's always live, that ability. You also have abilities that activate when you do something specific. Like in this case, you can slap down a Galarian Zigzagoon and if you do that, you can put one damage counter on one of the opponent's Pokemon. What are damage counters? Well, glad you asked. Damage counters are uh, actually the, the way you provide damage. In uh, this case, let's just uh, zoom in uh, this damage. This is a damage counter. Let's say uh, a Charmander, not a Charmander, a Squirtle uses a tackle for 10 damage. Then the Sijuai receives 10 damage. You can uh, keep getting damage counters on yourself, like uh, more damage, 30 damage, it doesn't matter. You get a lot of damage onto your Decidueye 
until you have 140, that, so that means 14 damage counters, and then you're knocked out, go to the discard pile, and the opponent takes a prize. That's how it goes. And you, you also have abilities that you can activate by yourself. Sometimes it would stay like once during your turn, you can activate this ability and then something happens. So uh, now we got everything explained about the Pokemon cards. You, you do see that there's not a resistance on this card. Uh, you want to know what V Pokemon and GXs are? Well, glad you asked. We're going to be showcasing a V Pokemon right here. This is Zacian V, probably the most dominant V Pokemon of all of them. V Pokemon and GXs have one thing in common. They give up more prize cards. So in this case, Zacian V, let's just overlook it uh, once again, it is a Pokemon with 220 HP, so they are very powerful, but the downside of these cards is that they give up two prize cards, which you can see on the right bottom of the card. So uh, if you don't know what a card specifically does, read the card entirely and everything will become clear. This this, uh, this Zation does have resistance. As you can see on the bottom, in the middle, you do see that it has minus 30 resistance. So if this Decidueye would attack the Zation, it will receive 30 less damage. On the other hand, if a Charmander again slaps onto a Zacian, the damage output is multiplied by two. So we have weakness, which is a very, very, it's a very, it plays a huge role in the trading card game. Resistance, not as much. It's not too busted, but it is there. Zacian, in this case, has a two retreat cost. Its attack does 230 damage, so the, uh, the damage output is ridiculous with these V Pokemon and GXs. GXs are also still in the game, but uh, will be rotated uh, in a year. And we're gonna come to the uh, conclusion that certain cards are not legal, but that's gonna be for an, a whole different video, and that's gonna be the video where I'm explaining the standard format and the expanded format. For now, you just need to know what cards do. In this uh, case, Zacian also has an ability that you can use, and if you use the ability, you can actually look at the top three cards of your deck, see if there's any metal energies in there. If there are energies in there, you can attach it to Zacian and end your turn. So, and the rest go to your hand, which is uh, a very busted ability, but this fella gives up two prize cards. So now that we got that out of the way, we have Pokemon cards, we've explained the basic energy cards, and uh, the basic energy cards, as mentioned, are uh, the ones that are on the screen right now. And that is actually, uh, yeah, <laughs> these are on the screen right now and that's the grass energy. But there's also fire energies, lightning energies, etc. A whole heap of energies. And, and from these uh, energy cards, you can have as many of them in your deck as you want. From any other card, only four. For instance, there's also special energies in the game. And these are actually energies that uh, require, uh, get additional effects. For instance, this capture energy provides a carless energy. But if you use it, you can search your deck for a Pokemon and put it onto your bench. So a very busted effect, but there's a special energy and you can only have four of this specific special energy. You could have like four of these and then four of another special energy of your liking. As mentioned, every single card you can have a four off except for the basic energy. There you can have as many as you want. Okay. With that being explained, let's talk about uh, V-Maxes. There's also a specific amount uh, <laughs> being played in the current meta game. V-Maxes are also busted Pokemon, as you can see, 340 HP. Uh, this is going through the roof, right? These are uh, insane numbers, but the downside is they give up three prize cards. That's the exact same thing as Tag Team GXs. GXs are still in the game. Uh, let me just see if I can find one for you, uh, because th they will get rotated very shortly, but that doesn't matter. I'm still gonna explain that in this video. So we do have access uh, to Tag Team GXs, and these also give up three prize cards. So as you can see, there's Tag Teams, there's V Maxes, very powerful Pokemon, but they give up three prize cards, but they have busted attacks. Also, this specific GX has a GX move. This is a move that you can only use once during a game. So if a game starts uh, until it's finished, you can uh, use a GX move, but you can only use it once until a new game starts. And then in this case, this Pikachu and Zekrom GX can actually use Tag Ball GX. If it has more energies attached to it, it can actually stop 200 to the active and 170 to one of the bench Pokemon, the Pokemon backup. So very powerful Pokemon, but give up multiple prize cards. Okay, now that we talked about energies and Pokemon, let us talk about trainer cards. And trainer cards are like the bread and butter in every single deck out there. Let's just start off that uh, there's a couple of different things about trainer cards. You can have item cards like this. This is a quick ball, very much used in almost every deck. You can have supporter cards, which is uh, on the screen right now. Let's just put it like this. And then we have uh, stadium cards. 
Okay, what is the difference between all of these cards? We're uh, gonna explain that in this video. I know everything is overlapped a little bit, but don't worry about it at all. Uh, let's just put them like this. So everything is a little bit clear. So let's start off with the quick ball entirely. So quick ball is an item card and with item cards, you can play as many item cards during your turn as you possibly want. So you can play four quick balls. There's a maximum of because four of every single uh, yeah card in your deck as mentioned. So you could be playing four quick ball and other item cards. There's more item cards out there. That's a switch card, for example, which allows you to switch without paying that retreat cost as we've seen in this video. So that could also be an item. You can play as many as you want, but there's also specific item cards like tool cards. These can uh, be attached to Pokemon and they stay and play. All the other item cards immediately go to the discard pile after being used. In this case, you can put a big charm onto a Pokemon and their HP gets increased by 30. So you can attach tool cards to all of your Pokemon, but every Pokemon can only have one tool card. There are of course items to get rid of tool cards uh, in the, the meta game. So that's a tool card and you can also play as many as you want uh, during your turn. Now, we're going to be talking about uh, supporter cards. And supporter cards are very powerful uh, trainer cards, but you can only use one supporter during a turn. So in this specific case, this research discards your hand and then you draw seven cards. And now we're going to be talking about how you set up a game and what is your hand very shortly. But this is very good because drawing cards in a, a card game is uh, initially very strong. And uh, you can only play one supporter during your turn. Of course, there's other ways to play multiple supporters, but that uh, and revolves around playing another supporter. So lots of trainer cards can interact with the ruling of certain things. You can also only attach one energy uh, per, um, per turn, but that can also bend around if you're using item cards or supporters to help out with that. And then the last uh, specific card is going to be... Uh, yeah, not Pikachu Zekrom. Uh, we're going to be talking about stadium cards. Yeah, third field stadium in this case. This is a stadium card. What can stadium cards do? Stadium cards actually go on that specific uh, portion of the play zone. So they are uh, stated uh, on this specific side and they work for both players. Crazy, right? So uh, certain stadium cards can help out your deck. In this case, we were showcasing the Sijuai. So in this case, Turfield Stadium can search out an Evolution Grass Pokemon. This can help out your deck with consistency because you can search out your Dartrix or the Sijuai with the stadium card. Stadium cards also stay and play uh, for the rest of the game and only go away until they get overlapped by another stadium. You cannot uh, overplay a stadium with the same name. So now that we made that clear, stadium cards can only be played once during a turn and they stay in play. So we have stadium cards, you can play that during a turn but they stay in play. Item cards, if you play an item card, they go instantly to the, to the discard pile. For instance, if we play a quick ball, we play the quick ball, Da, 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 and we put it in the discard pile. Quick ball, you can discard one card from the hand and search your deck for a Pokemon and put it onto your bench. In our case, we can put a quick ball and find ourselves a Rowlet. That could happen and you can just put it on the bench or uh, yeah, just put it on the bench or you can keep it in your hand, whatever uh, suits you just fine. Okay, what else are we going to talk about uh, up next? So we talked about all these specific different Pokemon cards. We're going to be actually stating the thing here is that uh, we talked about attacks, HP, abilities, all that. Trainer cards, tool cards, stadium cards, etc. Now it's time to set up a game. That's important, right? How do you actually play the game? So you've made your deck uh, with 60 cards. You have your quick build, your po professor's research. You have all your good trainer cards in your deck. You have your Pokemon line in here, your Rowlet, your Dartrick, your Decidueye. You have a lot of energies in your deck and you're good to go. You have 60 cards. How do you set up a game? Well, first of all, we draw seven cards from the deck. First of all, we shuffle and then we draw seven cards. For instance, uh, let us just have this. We have a Rowlet in the hand. We have a third field stadium in the hand. Let's just put all of these cards in the hand while we're at it. So I can explain to you what you can do first. So we have another one of these. Okay, then we have a Zigzagoon. There we go. Four cards already. Uh, maybe a weak guard energy to get rid of the weakness. This is a special energy. There we go, then a grass energy. And then we end up with a powerful supporter. So this is what an opening hand typically looks like. 
In our scenario, we have two basic Pokemon in the hand, so uh, you always have to have a basic in the opening hand. We have a basic, Rowlet goes to the active slot, all the rest of our hand, let's just uh, minimalize uh, these fellas for now. Okay, so we have a basic Pokemon, uh, so both players shuffle, uh, before that happens you just have to decide who starts the game, so you flip a coin, if heads, uh, if somebody is correct, you can decide whether you start or whether you go second. Certain decks want to go second because they can already make use of supporters because on the first turn of the game you cannot attack and you cannot uh, use a supporter. So the only thing you can do is just play item cards and stadium card and attach an energy. So in our case, let's say that we go first, right? We go first and uh, we have this, we have a basic Pokemon. Let's say you don't have a basic Pokemon, you have to reshuffle your deck again and then uh, you can do the exact same process. But for every time you don't have a Pokemon that is called a Mulligan, the opponent has the chance to take an additional card, actually to draw an additional card, which helps them out a lot. Okay, so we have Rowlet in the active, which is good. And uh, next up, we have to put six prize cards uh, yeah, we have to slap down six prize cards because that is the initial ruling of the game. After you have selected a basic Pokemon, you have to showcase your prize card. So this is uh, where the prize cards go. As mentioned, if you knock something out, you can take one of these prize cards and add it to your hand. And uh, as soon as you get all your prize cards, you are the winner of the game. Moving forward, so uh, you have our deck. Let's just put our deck... Uh, to, 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 yeah, we do have a deck. So we have a deck, we have an opening hand, and this is how a game typically goes. So what can you do on the first turn? You cannot play supporters, and you can also not play item cards, unfortunately. So, uh, all right, yeah, yeah, you cannot play supporters, and you cannot attack. You can play item cards. So this is our first turn, so we uh, can attach an energy once during our turn, so the energy goes to the Rowlet. We can slap down a stadium card, which means we can search our deck for an evolution card, so that is exactly what we're gonna do. Ta -da, we found a Dartrix from the deck, adding it to our hand. We can play a Quick Ball. Also, if you have additional basic Pokemon in the opening hand, you don't have to put them down. Also, uh, if you start a game, put your Pokemon face down until the uh, game starts. So otherwise the opponent will know which Pokemon he needs to select and you don't want to see that ever. So uh, next up, we're going to be using a Quick Ball. Putting the Quick Ball in the discard pile uh, by discarding the Weak Guard energy and we will find ourselves another Rowlet. This Rowlet in our hand does have an ability and uh, this ability means if we have something like Bird Keeper in our hand and if we've used it, we can use its attack for free. But for now, let's just put this little Rowlet on the bench where it belongs and that is our first turn. I would have wished we would have been able to play a supporter but we are not able to play down a supporter on the first turn of the game. Then the opponent will probably do some madness onto us, so he will probably put some damage counters on us. So damn, uh, there we go. The damage counters uh, go flying in. It's a little bit hard for uh, real life editing like this. But we're gonna try and do our best. So yeah, somebody slapped 10 damage onto our Rowlet. It still survives, which is fine. Put the damage counters on your Pokemon. You could also use dice to indicate how much damage there is on a Pokemon. But uh, typically everybody uses dice at tournaments. Same for the coin flips. Like the uneven numbers are tails and the even numbers are heads. That's also something you can do. So this Rowlet has damage. Now it's back to us. And this is our second turn. We draw a card. <laughs> That's actually something we forgot on the, the turn here. But you always draw a card on your turn. Let's say we draw a card and it is, ta -ta -ta -ta, it is just a grass energy. We draw a card, you add it into your hand. After that is done, we can just uh, attach an energy. For instance, we're attaching it to our, uh, yeah, to our bench Pokemon. And then we use uh, the evolution mechanic. A Pokemon needs to be in play for one turn in order for us to activate this uh, mechanic of evolution, which was the case for our Rowlet. Now we can use a Galarian Zigzagoon. This is a Pokemon that has an ability. If we slap it down on the bench, we can put one damage counter on one of the opponent's Pokemon. And then we can just simply go for a research. Research allows us to discard our hand. Our hand is empty, which is awesome. And now we can draw seven cards. So uh, in our case, that will be uh, a lot of cards. Like for instance, a Quick Ball for another Pokemon another supporter for next turn, we got energy, all the, the stuff that matters as mentioned. So there's a lot of things that could happen with this scenario. So this is how games typically go. You can play an energy card, 
you can evolve a Pokemon, you can bench as many basic Pokemon as you want, you can uh, activate a stadium card or play one stadium card a turn, you can play a supporter, only one during a turn, and I think I've mentioned everything right now. You can also only retreat a Pokemon once, so in our case we can retreat our Dartrix if we really want to, so we can put an energy in the discard pile, put that, uh, yeah, put that Dartrix on the bench, put that one damage counter, all the damage remains on the bench Pokemon by the way, and we can promote a new Pokemon, that's, good. that's how it could go. And then to end your turn, you either can pass, say like I pass my turn, or you can attack. And that's how the uh, your turn ends. So if you attack, uh, you can just uh, activate the attack. You do need the necessary amount of energies to uh, activate an attack. Otherwise, uh, you, you're probably just gonna have to pass out until you're ready. Next up, special conditions. You're ready? Special conditions are uh, things that are in the trading card game. Certain Pokemon have special conditions going around. And these special conditions could be uh, interesting to say the least because they can provide you with extra damage, could uh, leave you stuck in the active position, could let you slap damage onto yourself, etc. First things we're gonna talk about is paralyzation. If a Pokemon is paralyzed, we have to put it sideways. I don't know if I can do it on this program or not. Uh, let's see. Uh, if I can do it, let's just see here, T -t transform, flip vertical. Oh yeah, this is uh, not the one I wanted to do, okay. Let's try this out again. Okay, go along with me fellas, this is on the live editing transform. We're going to be flipping, yeah, rotate, yeah, there we go. Right now it is uh, asleep. Uh, actually, it's paralyzed, so if it is paralyzed, you uh, put it on the right side like this. If a Pokemon is paralyzed, you are not able to retreat, you are not able to attack, and uh, it goes away after one turn. So that's very nasty, a paralyzation. Uh, it goes away after one turn. You could be playing cards like Switch to go to the bench. As a little side note, special conditions get removed in the bench. You cannot get a poison Pokemon on the bench. You cannot get a burned Pokemon on the bench. Not a paralyzed Pokemon on the bench. If As soon as you go to the bench, special conditions go away. So sometimes the special conditions may not be the best thing in the world. Uh, but they are definitely in the trading card game. Okay, next special condition we're going to talk about. And that is going to be... Confusion. Let's go with that. Okay, let's flip him again. Okay, now we are confused. What can happen if you are confused? You can still try to attack. If you announce an attack, you have to flip a coin. If tails, you slap 30 damage onto yourself. So that's three damage counters being flipped over onto your side uh, if you flip tails. If you flip heads, the attack goes through. But you're still confused. You're, you're confused till the end of days until you go to the bench. But you can still try to activate attacks. If you flip tails, you put three damage counters on your uh, on yourself, depending on which attack. Now, actually, it doesn't matter which attack you use, you always get three damage counters. Next up, we're rotating again. This is the sleep condition. A sleep condition, you have to flip a coin between turns. If heads, you wake up. If tails, you're still asleep. If you are asleep, you cannot retreat and you can also not attack. So a little bit like paralyzation, but could go away between turns, uh, whereas paralyzation sticks for one turn. Then, the most interesting uh, thing, so all these uh, conditions at once, you cannot be asleep and paralyzed at the same time. It's either confused, paralyzed or asleep. You cannot have all of them simultaneously because this is uh, very interesting to say the least because let's say you are asleep and the opponent paralyzes you, you flip it to the right side and uh, you, uh, your, your asleep condition goes away. Okay, now we're back to normal. Or at least that uh, for now. Right now, there's going to be someone that's going to burn us. They're going to burn us. If somebody uses an attack and it says your opponent's Pokemon is now burned, we put a burn marker onto that Pokemon. What happens between turns? We flip a coin. If heads, we are uh, healed from the burn. If tails, we are still burned. And this goes on until yeah, you are healed from burn. Either you switch to the bench or you flip heads. But every single time between turns, if you are burned, you have to put two damage counters onto your Pokemon. So that could uh, add up very, very quickly. For sure, that is the special condition burned. Next up, we're going to be talking about the poison condition. Very similar to burn condition, but this one cannot be healed by uh, flipping coins. This is putting one damage counter on the poison Pokemon between turns. 
and this will remain until it goes to the bench. It, get, it never goes away if you stay in the active position. So people uh, that are poisoned, you can retreat, give up one energy, put it to the discard pile and retreat. That is an option to just promote another Pokemon. Then with that way you are healed from the poison condition. Or it uh, goes on and on and on. Okay, now that we talked about the uh, special conditions, there's a whole heap of them. There are not too great in the TCG right now because a lot of decks run the card switch and I already talked about switch before. Okay, and uh, all the cards that get uh, taken out of play, for instance, the Zigzagoon get, gets blown up. It goes to the discard pile. Yeah, whoa, we are moving around together with the Zigzagoon. So uh, the Zigzagoon goes to the discard pile and the opponent gets the chance to take an additional prize card. So that's how it goes. The discard pile could be filled with a lot of cards. Like all your cards go there. There's cards that can get stuff back from the discard pile. As mentioned, it could be like, oh, you have to be careful of resources in the trading card game. All the cards you play go to the discard pile. All the Pokemon that get knocked out go to the discard pile. So you have to make worry and see how many cards are still left in the deck to make uh, ideal uh, solutions. Always after a Pokemon is knocked out, you have to promote the new active Pokemon. If you don't have an active Pokemon, the opponent automatically wins. So that's a win condition as mentioned before. If we knock out a Pokemon, we take a prize card and we add that prize card to our hand. And that's the one, of the one from the prize cards that is of course on the left side of the game. Okay, there's a lot of cards here. Six prize cards. So if you uh, knock something out, you get one prize card and add it to your hand. If you've knocked out a, a V Pokemon or a GX, you can take two prize cards and those get added to your hand. So you get a hand advantage as soon as you get knock out more Pokemon. As soon as you get all your prize cards, you win. If you're not able to draw a card on the start of your turn, you automatically lose. So certain decks will also try to deck you out. That's a win condition. So what is the best way to be playing the Pokemon trading card game after watching this video? That's be installing the Pokemon trading card game online and play that. There they are gonna explain every single thing I've said in this video and onwards. So we're gonna be uh, improving on uh, how to play games from beginners. Uh, what are the best team decks that is gonna come up on this channel as well. But if you're more interested in the competitive side, if you already know how to play, be sure to check out my playlist. You'll definitely see all the top decks in town. Anyhow, hopefully this information was a little bit useful. If I forgot something, be sure to put it in the comment section. There's of course stuff that is not right now in the in the meta game, like Lost Zone and stuff that I haven't explained. But if you are interested to see more videos like this, be sure to let me know. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to mouse the like button, subscribe for more content, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video very, very shortly. I'm out. Peace.